guys, it's Mike Drudge from the VRV family of companies coming to you today from Vaught RV in Fort Worth, Texas. Boy, am I excited today. I have a 2023 Storyteller Classic Mode all-wheel drive. I want to spend a few minutes with you. Let's take a tour together. I'd love to show off my three favorite things about this 2023 Storyteller Classic Mode. Come check out number one. This unit has the Volta power system. It's a 12 kilowatt battery bank and a high output 8 kilowatt alternator for fast charging. I'm running the AC in here right now without a generator. Number two, one of the greatest innovations in camper van history is the Groove Lounge. This thing is so flexible, let me show you. It easily converts into an additional sleeping space. Number three, it's got a huge roof rack up here, plus a wind deflector right here to reduce noise. It's really stout. Okay, now let's take a tour around the outside of this coach before we go on the inside. Again, we are on a Mercedes-Benz 2500 series, four-cylinder, 144-inch wheelbase chassis. Now, this is uh, a Mercedes-Benz thing. We have high L output LED light bulbs up here and fog lights with cornering capabilities, which is really fantastic. Before I get into this tour, let me just talk a minute about this unit itself and Storyteller in general. Storyteller doesn't build anything else but these. They don't build, you know, Class A motorhomes and travel trailers and all kinds of other RVs. They build these and they're very deliberate how they build these. Our experience, my experience, has been that they take suggestions, they take input from users like you guys and people who are thinking about buying them have bought them and incorporating them into the design. And you can tell once you get in there and touch and feel and drive it. Now, why would you drop upwards to 200 Gs on something like this? A lot of people come and say, I wouldn't spend that much for something that doesn't even have a dedicated bathroom. Hey, they just don't get it, I guess, because the reason you buy one of these is so you can go camp where nobody else camps and take those pictures of your RV where nobody else can take a huge bus or even a big travel trailer or a fifth wheel. This is all about adventure. This is all about getting out there and really enjoying the outside, the outdoors, and having some creature comforts while you're doing it. Now you can get this in Mercedes-Benz Arctic White or Pebble Gray. This doesn't look really Pebble Gray to me, but it's certainly not Arctic White. Two color options. Uh, you've got your cut wheels here, um, nice gold colors which really accent the overall coach. Really like that. Uh, I'm going to get around to the other side and talk about the awning. I mentioned the roof rack, but up on top we have solar. So there's 90 watts of solar. You can expand that up to 600 watts if you want. But if you do, you're taking up that real estate up on top, which now you can currently use for storage. There's a lot of storage up there, and it really is, a, it's a deck. You can, you can put a lawn chair up there, you can strap all kinds of gear up there, and most people end up putting some kind of carrying case up there for extra gear, which is probably what I would do. Furthermore, regarding solar, you know, solar, 90 watts of solar is not going to recharge these batteries, uh, certainly not quickly. It will extend the amount of time you can be out without any other source of charging, but it's my third favorite way of charging the batteries, and I'll talk about that more when we get in and talk about the Volta system. You have your 30 amp smart plug right here, so this is uh, when you're hooking up to shore power. I know a lot of guys don't even use this. They're out, they're driving around, they're charging that battery while they're driving. They don't even carry a plug. I would, I'd like to have it. Uh, I'd like to uh, spud up to a shore power connection once a week, charge those batteries and take off on another adventure. But point being is some people don't even use that very much. Now we do have our tubular steel ladder here. It's a 300 pound capacity and it is stout, I'm telling you. I mean, this thing is not giving when I'm going up and down. Really nice. Um, I hear some complaints about it being on the side, but if it was on the back, it's in the way of the doors and you have to mitigate that. It just lives here on the side. 
So um, yeah, not a big deal to me, but it is stout and that is a big deal. Now this is your fresh water connection here. Um, so if you're gonna take some uh, water on board, of course 45 PSI is your limit. You always wanna use a water pressure regulator when you're hooking up to any RV. Coming around to the back, there is a step up into the back of the coach and I won't get too far into our inside tour because we're gonna go inside in a minute, but I wanna point this out, how far these doors open, which is all the way. So check that out, wide open here. I do have a drop down screen and privacy. It's zipped up and so you can open up portions of it to let fresh air come through. Really, really handy. While I'm back here, I'll go ahead and point out, well, we do have a 5,000 pound hitch here. You've got your seven way connection for lights and so on if you are pulling a trailer or something. But real quickly here, here's your water control panel. So depending on if you're in normal use or you're siphoning fresh water, to fill your tank and so on. You're gonna set these accordingly. You do have a separate water pump switch out here. And then an outdoor shower as well. And here's your spray port. You do get um, a pigtail hose connection that you can pop up on there to rinse off your dirty feet if you just went fly fishing or whatever, you rinse your feet off or your pet or whatever, or take a shower out here, you can do it. Of course, hot and cold, uh, fresh water drain. As this says, it's not a storage compartment, but you can access that. And then this is a duct, and there's one over there too for climate control back here. Over here's electrical. So I like the fact that Storyteller has put a cargo light switch here. There's also one up front in the galley area, and then there's a master light switch all the way up front as well. So this is great, because I'm back here and I want to access some gear. You can see these LED lights pop on right here. There's also a 12 volt uh, electrical port here. As it's labeled, your main breaker. You'll want to familiarize yourself with the main electrical components here. So your main breaker here is and your branch breaker is in this uh, compartment right next to it. And then we have uh, household current 110 outlets right here as well. You got channels along the bottom to secure gear. So obviously if you're using this for its intended purpose, you're probably gonna have some gear back here, whether it's bikes, mountain climbing, hiking, fishing, whatever your, your pleasure is for the outdoors, there's, uh, you can secure all that gear back in here. And I love this uh, no slip and really tough surface back here. I'll get into the way this works in just a minute when we go on the inside, but I wanted to point that out to you. Got some little storage compartments here in the door as well. Our camera lives up there on top. Coming around on this side, we have two more outlets. So you have a total of 410 outlets on the exterior portion of the coach and then a low mount solar uh, port here. So if you have some modular solar panels that you wanna hook up, run them out where there's sunshine, pop them in there, you can do that and not have them mounted permanently up on the rooftop. Do you have running boards along the side here? And we've got our um, all-terrain uh, wheels here as well. The mirrors on these coaches, all of the storytellers on the Mercedes Benz are going to be heated. You can fold them in from the driver's seat as well and of course adjust them till your heart's content. There's a lot of safety features that come with Mercedes Benz too and we'll review those when we get inside. So a little bit about pricing. It's right here on the window. Storyteller's big about see-through pricing, transparent pricing. Uh, the price is what it is. And in this case, it's right there on the window. Now that's as of today, we're filming this in May of 2023. These videos have a way of sticking around for a long time. So if you're watching this a year from now or two or three, that number is probably not gonna be right. And a lot of people ask me, why don't you put prices on all your RV uh, walkthroughs? And that's why. Um, Storyteller's unique because they put it out there. That's what every dealer has to sell this unit for. And it's right there. Now you might get some extra benefits uh, and additions from some dealers maybe they're going to take care of your travel or fly you in fly and drive that kind of thing 
but at the end of the day, that's the price you're going to pay. I want to add something else too. Here at Vaud RV, we are now a licensed dealer for CA vans, Canyon Adventure vans, which is a very popular source for optioning up storyteller units and other B vans, adventure vans like this. We're really excited about that. So if you wanna buy a classic like this and then upfit it to your desire, we can really help you do that. And that's one reason that this model in particular is so popular. People like to buy the basic, the classic, and then option it up to their own needs. The other way you can go is you can go up to a stealth, you can go up to a beast, which really has every option that Storyteller offers to you. You know, lighting package and front bumper and a lot of other pluses too. Not everybody wants all of those options, so a lot of people will opt for this classic and then option it up to their heart's desire. All right, lots of good stuff out here, even more on the inside, so let's go inside and have a look. But before we go in, I want to point out this beautiful Girard awning. What a great awning. It's power, push button, really adds shade, really adds to your patio experience out here. Love it. Let's go inside. Now, if you're spending a lot of time outdoors, and I hope you are, you're going to spend a lot of time on the patio outdoors from your unit. I love that there's a little drop down table here for food prep and so on. It's magnets, there's no catch, it just stays up like this. And this is what secures it. It's 15 pound, pound capacity. I kind of wish Storyteller would have made this adjustable since chances are you're probably not going to be perfectly level when you're out and about. Uh, it'd be nice if this was adjustable in case you aren't level so stuff's not rolling off. Not a huge deal, just something I'm, I'm, I'm observing. You do have power right here. So you can take your portable induction cooktop that's in the drawer inside and put it out here and do cooking out here and keep the smells and the heat out here on the patio side. There's a little cubby up here to throw some shoes and flip flops and dog leash or whatever. Uh, Storyteller did a nice job of utilizing every little bit of space available. So it's nice that that's there. Now, if it's a nice day and you wanna let air uh, circulate, but keep the bugs out, um, there's a nice design on the screen uh, drop down here. So all we need to do is loosen these little cleats here and drop this down. Now, these are all magnets. So there's magnets stitched in here. There's magnets stitched in here. So when I'm entering and exiting the coach, I, you're not having to fool around with zippers. That magnet just pops back in place like that. So I can drop this screen panel down. I've already got this one down um, for demonstration purposes, but it lets a lot of airflow in there. Now, this is a zipper right here. There's Velcro here and there's Velcro along here. So I can really make an, a bug tight fit all the way around and let air go in and out of the coach. And again, easy to get in and out without having to fool with zippers. So I really like that. So with that, we'll continue our tour on the inside. Okay, since we're talking about outdoor cooking, let's talk about indoor cooking too. You can cook with that induction cooktop either inside or out. I have a microwave in here as well. And so, uh, and a refrigerator. We have a dual powered refrigerator here and a little freezer compartment. So it's uh, 12 volts or 110. Uh, decent sized refrigerator, again, for a tiny little camper van like this. Have our switches right here for our awning lights as well as our awning arm in and out and right where it should be a cabin light switch so open up that door all the lights are off boom i hit that and on they come so that's real handy so we'll talk about the galley here a little bit i do have a single sink here with a flip up faucet which folds out of the way. Now for a tiny little unit like this, it's a pretty decent sized sink and that folds away and then this drops down so you have a little more prep space up on top. I do have AC power over here to the right. I've also got USB and 12 volt power accessible right to uh, the right of the countertop area here as well. 
There's a set of switches under here. You have your sink drain pump, your hot water circulation pump, your water pump itself, and then cargo lights. So I can also turn my cargo lights on and off from right here. Now that water circulation pump, when that's on, as the name implies, it's circulating hot water. So you have a diesel powered both furnace and water heater on this when that's circulating it's keeping water hot at all locations so that's really nice to have that and then lockable drawers all the way down here here is your portable induction cooktop take this out of the drawer again i can put it out there i can rest it up here for cooking as well and if i can show this on video and you can get a tight shot of these dovetail joints you only see that kind of thing in high-end furniture. These are not stapled um, and glued and that kind of thing. Those are dovetail joints. These are really nicely built cabinets with ball bearing drawer glides. And then each one of these locks, and you wanna make sure they are locked. Push it in like that and they're locked uh, before you take off on travel. And then up here, we have a, a little microwave and it is really little, but hey, everything's little in here but hey it's big enough to warm up leftovers warm up some soup make some popcorn what have you now this is another neat thing here's a little charging port for a wireless bluetooth speaker uh, it's still in the box back here there's a number of goodies you get with this unit i've left them all in the box so you can be the first one to open them but you pop this on here and it's charging while it's up here and then you can pop it off take it in your backpack on a hike and listen to music for, uh, through bluetooth really handy to have that Plus, there's little uh, charging ports right next to it as well for uh, Android and iPhones. A little hook there for a towel or jacket or, or what have you. So, very nice little galley area and a very functional galley area. When I turn around here, so we need power for some things and we have it right up here. I love this Volta system. So, right here's where you're going to turn it on, the master switch. And it is on because it's green. Touch it to wake up. And now we can see what we've got going on here. It's warm here in Texas. The air conditioner is running and I still have 8.2 hours of time remaining on this battery pack, assuming that it continues to run the way it's running right now. If I turn the air conditioner off, which I just did, it's going to take it a second to recalibrate and tell me how long it's got. It went up to nine immediately. It's going to go up farther than that in just a second. But over here, we can see that our interior temperature is 88 degrees and our, our uh, target temp where it is. Can control our, control our water pump and so on. This is a really, this is sort of the brains of the coach right here. Notice we've gone from 12, now we're up to 18 hours time remaining. So it's trying to figure out, okay, this guy's not using the air conditioner anymore and that number is going to continue to rise. Now it's up to 37 hours. So again, it's a 12 kilowatt hour a battery bank in here. It's an eight kilowatt high output alternator. So when you're driving, you're charging and you're charging quickly. In fact, my favorite way to charge your battery bank is driving. Once you get over about 1800 RPMs, you're throwing a lot of charge to those batteries and you can ch uh, charge the battery bank up in about an hour and a half ish uh, to full charge. Of course, you can also charge it from plugging it up to shore power would be my second favorite way to do it. And then thirdly is solar. Again, with 90 watts of solar, you're not doing a whole lot of charging. That's more of a trickle maintainer uh, kind of charge. Uh, again, you can expand your solar up to 600 watts if you want to, but the trade-off, there's always a trade-off, you're uh, taking up valuable storage real estate up on top. So. Uh, if my cameraman will let me turn the air conditioner back on, I'm going to do that. So, but it's not loud. I mean, you have my I have lapel mic on right here. So that's running at high because it's trying to keep up with my target uh, temperature here. Now, uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something here. And here's the thing. Um, you guys who own these things are the smartest cats in the world because you're out there using these things all the time and feel free to drop comments below if you're thinking about buying one of these 
or you just did, my advice is to join one of the great forums online and post your questions. There's a lot of information and some really smart dudes out there and dudettes that can help you navigate using all the technology features on these, of which there are a lot. Because uh, you're always going to come across something that you hadn't thought about. I do every day when I'm in these. So this is meant to just give you kind of a cursory th thumbnail sketch of what's uh, involved in these units to help you uh, uh, make a decision if this might be for you. How about this? This is one of my favorite things. Storyteller calls this a groove lounge. It's pretty groovy. If you're old enough to remember groovy, yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'm old enough to remember groovy. So get rid of this cushion up here. Now, right now, we have a seat for uh, some passengers behind here. Also, before I leave this area, since I'm talking about it, I do have USB charging right here. So if I'm sitting here, I can charge my gadgets. There is a lagoon table right behind me here that pops in here. So I can have a laptop and have a dedicated little workspace right here, <clears throat> as well as household current right next to the seat as well. So using this the way it's set up right now, great way to do that. Anyway, I've taken this part off up here and I can drop this down by just releasing this tab like so. Now, if I want to make this into a bed, release this down and release this down, boom, just like that. Now, in addition to my bed back there, I have another bed up here or a lounge area, however you want to use it. It's nice to, to have those options. I can pop this up like this and be able to lounge this way as well. So facing this way, facing that way, a bed. It's not super cushy. If I'm sleeping on this, I would probably put a foam pad or something on this to make it a little bit more comfortable. Now you might have noticed under here is a safe so there are little cubbies for storage underneath here and i love this this is a small little safe um, big enough for some cash big enough for some personal protection uh, under here um, and uh, hidden under the seat now when i pop this back in the spot that it was notice that this uh, little handle the way it's oriented right here that can be a knee digger all right so when you're navigating in here it's dark boom ouch easy fix quick tip just take a screwdriver loosen this and rotate it to where, wherever you want it i would point it straight down so when you're walking along here you're not going to be hurting your leg quite so bad boom you get rid of that sharp object so quick little tip there I'm going to go ahead and pop this back up for the rest of our tour and show you the table and the flex space shower back here. Now one of the design elements that makes this storyteller so unique and while I'm talking about design elements let me mention that the floor plan is the floor plan on a storyteller. There's not multiple floor plans so you're not going to get one with the galley over here on one and and the bed somewhere else. This is the floor plan and storytellers. So whether you're buying the classic, the Mode LT, or you're going up to a Stealth or a Beast, it's gonna look like this in here. There are some subtle differences, especially when you get up into the Beast. But on the uh, Stealth and the classic, like we're in now, looks just like this. I alluded to the Lagoon table and, the, and it's right down here. So if I release this switch, right here is your Lagoon table that you can pop up front for a little workspace put your laptop on and so on now this is neat this is a halo shower area it's a very flexible space here because right now where's the bathroom there's no bathroom in this thing sort of is it's right there <laughs> so is the shower so the neat thing about this is it gives you living space when you're not using after all think about it. how much time in the day do you need to use either a bathroom or a shower. Well, it's pretty small relative to the rest of the hours of the day when you need more space for living because we don't have a lot of space in here to begin with. So, if I loosen this little cleat and lift this up, boom, there is a shower pan. Now, you, uh, these units do come with a portable toilet that uh, folks will store in there or wherever. Some people opt to not use it at all and just use the facilities where they're at. 
personal call on your part, but you can put the toilet in there. And then what about privacy? So we have what uh, Storyteller calls a halo shower. This is the whole shower assembly up here and uh, it's pretty easy to deploy and it doesn't take up any room when it's tucked away. So let me show you when it's deployed. So our halo shower, open up this door, pull this out and boom, now's our shower curtain and our privacy. Tuck this in, it's got little magnets that keep it um, up around the edges and magnets on the door here and now I'm in the shower, just like so. So you have a little privacy. Now, um, you do have hot and cold. I have a shower wand up here, as you would expect. And then when you fold this up, tuck it in and away, this is all waterproof compartment up here. I'd let it dry before I did that, but if you're in a hurry, you don't have to close this up and you drop it down and let it air out later. But pretty neat use of space because again, when I don't need the shower, I don't need the shower. I'd rather have the space for sitting down working or whatnot. Pretty cool. All right, we'll go ahead and close our shower pan back up and step back into the garage area. Now, if you're by yourself, you might opt to leave this all the way open. Maybe you put storage racks in here. It's entirely up to you. This is one area that's often customized on these units is uh, putting storage drawers and all kinds of ways you can customize this back here. But let's say this. You've got a garage space for toys. You've got a flexible workspace. You might just convert that groove lounge into the bed and that's where you sleep every night. But I'll just show you some configurations. We're wide open here for our bikes. We got our L channel down here for storage and so on. I'll show you how to release this, drop the legs. You're always gonna drop this side first. So pop your legs down and then we can you want to make sure each one of these legs go into these little recessed areas right there. Okay, now I have a side here that I can use for food prep. I want to get on my laptop. I want to work on some climbing gear, whatever. A lot of people will opt to make this a workstation. Get my laptop out, do some work, spread some paperwork out here. It's just a nice big surface for whatever you need to do right here. And I like that it's, it's that easy to convert it. Now let's say you want to use this as a bed, and many do. So obviously we'll want our cushions on here. Again, you're gonna drop this side first, this goes down, and then you have a little lip here which is gonna support the weight of this side. So I'll release this side as well and drop this down. Now I have cushions on either side. Cut just right to fit. There and there. Now I have a very, very comfortable bed up here. Most people that are tall, like me, or average size are gonna sleep this way. Fortunately, we have these flared spaces on either side that give you a little bit of le extra leg room so you, a couple people can sleep this way. Now, while I'm up here, I wanna point out our storage over the top of each one of these. That's our shower, of course. But starting here, coming all the way back, these cabinets are actually removable. So let's say you want to get rid of these and you want this space to be open up here more than you want the cabinet space. You can actually remove this cabinet assembly and this cabinet assembly over here. I stuck this up here as a windshield shade. You also have blackout shades for all the windows that are also insulated all the way around. So obviously you have total privacy uh, once you're in the coach. And make sure these are always locked like so. You can see I have household current up here. I also have 110 outlets right here. Now, speaking of insulation, uh, Storyteller insulates these units with sheep's wool. 
And as I'm sure you know, sheep's wool is one of the greatest insulators of all time. So that's another reason why these are so well insulated and also why they're so quiet. But interesting to me that they opt for uh, sheep's wool insulation on Storyteller. Pretty cool. Anyway, it's very comfortable. These are thick cushions. Some people will even put a topper, uh, a mattress topper on top of this as well depending on your own personal choice, but it's pretty easy to convert. And also, while this is up, I still have all of this space under here. So that's high enough to accommodate a bicycle camping gear. Again, if you opt to customize it with some other storage uh, compartments back here, you can certainly do that. So very nice. All right, moving our tour up to the front of the coach, I want to point out the windows really quickly. So these are tilt-out windows. They're super easy to open. And I like that they're tilt-out because all you do is crank them out, and that way you can leave these things open during the day. And if it does come up a rain shower, it can't rain in here. So you're off on a hike. It's a really nice day. You just want a little air circulation in here without having to run any other fans or anything tilt that out. A lot of people will look at this the way Storyteller designed it and they'll think that this is just a cleat holding this screen on and that you have to take the screen off to open up the window. Honest mistake, but it's actually a crank. So just crank it counterclockwise, open up the window and uh, close it back just like that. So pretty neat design, easy to do. Also on tank capacities, you have 21 gallons of fresh water on this, 24 gallons of gray water uh, capacity. So if you're off, just kind of be mindful of tank capacities. Uh, that's a pretty respectable amount of uh, tank size for a little unit like this. So now we're on a Mercedes-Benz 2500 chassis and there's all the goodies that come with Mercedes Benz. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start this so we can see the dash work and everything on this unit. It really handles well. I'm very fond of the way this thing drives. Uh, in addition to the way Storyteller built the house behind it, uh, the chassis itself is just really solid. I love driving it. It drives like kind of a performance SUV, if you will. So if you've shopped, uh, if you've shopped these units and Mercedes-Benz uh, provides chassis for a lot of different manufacturers, it's going to be, they're going to be the same safety features and cab convenience features. But in, uh, in the last year, a lot of things they've added, which are really special. Now we have heated adjustable seats down here. So there's three different memory positions on the seat um, and these do swivel around. But uh, so I can have a position for, for my seat and that seat and, and a third one for rotating them around, what have you. Now these mirrors over here do fold in automatically. So just hit the switch and they fold in. Of course, fully adjustable left and right uh, power windows. The, wi the uh, mirrors are heated as well. Now on your steering column here, you have this little basically mouse uh, button here. So once you click that once, you can thumb through all the different uh, options to customize the coach. And on the right one, you're going to do the same thing over on this side. So it's really neat to have that at your fingertips. I can adjust my volume over here um, without leaving my hands leaving the steering wheel. Now, I love that Storyteller put a master light switch right here. So again, I've got that master switch right inside the sliding door there. But a lot of the time you're driving here your partner, significant other, gets up, all the lights are, are dark, you can hit that switch and all the lights back there go on or off. Really handy to have that and I very much, very much appreciate that. Um, down, I've got cup holders here uh, on either side, up here, and then if you push these little releases all the way across, there's little storage cubbies up here with of course usb ports uh, in here you can remove these things and clean them if you need but nice uh, little storage compartments up there as well so lots of places to put beverages and charge your gadgets speaking of storage there's a little storage uh, uh, cubbies up above each side here as well our reading lights up here uh, handy and really bright. I can't show it because it's so bright out here, but it's really nice reading lights uh, 
for task lighting and so on. So there's a lot of neat safety and entertainment functions on the Mercedes-Benz, uh, much more than I would have ever imagined, and it really makes the driving experience elevated from what you would have experienced even a few short years ago. You know, we're talking about satellite radio, uh, intelligent navigation, you got smartphone wireless charging, there's active lane keeping assist, active brake assist, and even traffic sign assist. So it actually reads traffic signs for what they are saying and, and lets you know about that. So a lot of safety features that have, have really come along in, in recent years. I already mentioned the, the heated mirrors. I mentioned the fog lamps with cornering light function. That's really special on the Mercedes-Benz, especially when you're out after dark, obviously, or in low visibility situations. Um, uh, these seats that we're sitting on right now are heated and they do swivel so as you might expect from Mercedes-Benz there's a lot of comfort features that come with this chassis and it really makes the the user experience really special so I like it a lot okay I like to take these things out for a spin once in a while I, it's hard to impart road noise over film but I've got my sound meter right now to give you an idea of the decibels going down the road these storyteller units are incredibly quiet. Now this is not the greatest road. It's actually got a lot of uh, expansion joints and stuff, but it's very quiet. Obviously it's a really great handling machine. I love the way the Mercedes units drive, but super quiet partly because of insulation and also partly because there's carpet on the walls in here. Carpet is a double-edged sword, I guess. It makes it quiet in here. It also can collect dust over time, but just keep it clean. I love how quiet it is riding down the road. There's a lot of traffic around here. This unit is really responsive. Besides being insulated well, there's just no rattles. I'm gonna shut up here for a second. You don't hear any rattling in the back, no vibrations. Um, it speaks to storytellers' commitment to quality. Every unit that we get in, I find is the same in terms of just really put together well, super quiet, and not rattling going down the road. So if you're taking this thing off-road, you're beating up on it a little bit, going over rocks and ravines and everything, it's important that it's put together right. So just wanted to give you a little tour on the road to give you a sense of how this thing rides best I can over film. That wraps up our tour for today, guys. This is the classic mode. Thanks for joining me. Now, whether you're shopping in the greater Houston area, come out to Leisure RV Center there, or here in Fort Worth at Vaught RV. Either way, we look forward to seeing you. My name is Mike. I'll see you next time.